So hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to our podcast again. Uh, my name is Zian. I'm Divya. And I'm Kirtana. So uh, today we'll be discussing something uh, that is very important to know and also understand, especially for us veterinary students, uh, which is about the anatomical disorders of the reproductive organs in cattle. So for today, we'll be focusing mainly on four disorders, uh, which are free martin, white hyper disease, hypoplasia, both ovary and testicular hypoplasia, and as well as cryptokytism. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for such an amazing introduction, Zian. So whenever I hear the word free martin, I actually actually think that it's someone's name. Yes, me too, Kitana. It was until I learned that it's actually a condition that causes infertility in female cattle born with a twin to a male. When a hyper twin shares the uterus with a blue bo- uh, sorry, bull fetus, they also share the placenta membrane connecting the fetus with the dame. That's very interesting, Vivia. And are there any clinical signs that you can observe in such cases? Yeah, the clinical signs are the male twins in this case is only affected by reduced fertility in over 99% of the over 90% of the cases, while the female twin is completely infertile. Because of a transfer of hormones or maybe a transfer of the cell, the hyper-reproductive tract is severely underdeveloped and sometimes even contains some elements of the full reproductive tract. Yeah, that is very true, Divya. And also, uh, free martin is genetically female but has many characteristics of a male. The ovaries of the free martin does not develop correctly and they remain very small. Also, the ovaries of uh, free martin do not produce the hormones necessary to induce the behavioral signs of heat. The external vulvar region can uh, range from a very normal looking female to a female that appears to be male. So usually the vulva is normal, except in uh, some animals an enlarged clitoris and large tufts of vulva hair exist. So how about the causes? Does anyone know? Oh. Okay, the causes is the joining of the placenta membrane occurs at about the 14th day of pregnancy. And thereafter, the fluid of two fetus are mixed. This causes exchange of blood and antigen, carrying characteristics that are unique to each hyphen and bulls. When this antigen mix, they affect each other in a way that causes each to develop with some characteristics of the other sex. Oh, so I've actually read somewhere that free martinism cannot be prevented. But however, it can actually be diagnosed in a number of ways, ranging from simple examination of the placental membranes to the chromosomal evaluation. And the cattleman can actually predict the reproductive values of his heifer calf at birth. And it can actually like save the feed and also the development costs if he is aware of a high probability of free martinism in the cattle. And in some cases, there are actually no symptoms of free martinism because the male twin may have been aborted at an earlier stage of gestation. Oh, I see. Thank you, uh, Kitana, for the diagnostic. So maybe next we'll be talking about another condition, uh, which is known as hi- white hyper disease or WHD. So based on from what I know, so WHD is a con- congenital uh, reproductive abnormality in the white female offspring, which is known as hyphers, in certain breeds of cattle, such as uh, Belgian blue and also short horn. So the color white is inherited as a recessive characteristic uh, linked to abnormalities in a female reproductive tract based on the uh, Mullerian system. So usually these hyphers uh, are infertile. Ah, yes, that's very true. And the main clinical signs that can be noticed are excessive construction of the hind so that the vagina canal will be clogged. Then abnormalities in the ovida, uterus, cervix, and vagina like cervix, deep, pretty, uterus, unicornis, and etc. Yeah, and actually the inability of the malarian ducts to form appears to be the cause of this disease. And due to arrested development of this malarian duct system, the uterus and the vagina are incompletely developed and the development of hymen membrane, but the ovaries and vulva are always normal. Thank you, Gitana. I think I will explain some information on the hypoplasia too, which is an abnormal growth of one or both ovaries or testes. 
If there's any abnormality on only one of the organs, it's called unilateral, while for both organs, it's called bilateral. The ovaries and testes was not functioning ever since the fetus period. And guys, during ovary hyperplasia, the administration of uh, FSH will not affect the development of follicles. And the ovary will be, in, uh, will be small in size, thin and hard. And sometimes it can also be like a cable at the end of a ligament and is devoid of follicles or corpora luteum. The testicular hyperplasia, on the other hand, is among the main genetic and congenital disorders in cattle and its incidence can influence the genetic progress and profitability of livestock injury and it is characterized by incomplete development of the germinal epithelium of the semiferous tubules due to inadequate number of germinal cells within the testes. Oh, I see. Mm. So guys, can you share some of the sign of uh, some of the clinical signs that can be found in hypoplasia? Yes, so in ovarian hypoplasia, the symptom can be seen by performing clinical examination such as breathing, uh, breathing sound and seminal examination including reproductive health history, physical examination, transrectal ultrasonograph of the reproductive system and vaginal examination. During transrectal ultrasonograph, small flaccid uterus can be seen and the ovaries cannot be visualized. On vaginal examination, the most notable finding was a lack of tone in the cervix. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I did read some article about uh, hypoplasia. Is that uh, testicular hypoplasia is often uh, present in disorders such as cryptokinesis, which is the next we'll be talking about. But also unilateral testicular hypoplasia is characterized by decrease of around 1.5 to 2 cm in one of the testicles. And usually, uh, studies found is on the left testicle. It's of, it often happen on the left uh, testicle. So bilateral uh, testosterone uh, hypoplasia is defined by a reduced size of both testicles and consequently reduced scrotal circumference. So animals with unilateral testis testicular hypoplasia uh, usually have normal reproductive rates. Their libido and ability to breed are not affected but the reproductive life product produced is shorter compared to non-affected animals. So hypoplastic animals uh, present flaccid testic testicular consistency uh, caused by development of sperm-producing tissue and reduced uh, size of testicles. I see. So guys, what could be the main cause actually of this disorder? Yeah. Sorry. There are many causes for this condition. Mainly, it's due to ovarian hypoplasia associated with deficiency of germ cell occur infrequently in cattle. This condition of the ovary is considered to be due to failure of regulation of primordial germ cell from the yolk sac to the developing gonads during embryonic stage. In Swedish Highlands, breed of cattle, hypoplasia is determined to have caused by single recessive autosomal gene. Yeah, I agree. And the main genetic cause of testicular hyperplasia are considered to be aneuploidy, chromosomal abnormalities, and the expression of a recessive autosomal gene with an incomplete penetrance interfering on spermatogenesis process. That is very interesting. So um, how do we uh, can diagnose uh, these conditions? So, so ovarian hyperplasia Plasia was diagnosed in Swedish Highland cattle on the transrectal uh, patient of small size furrowed or spinal shaped ovaries and lack of germ cell observed on histologic section. More recent studies have utilized PCR assay. Okay, guys, did you know that hyperplasia is actually considered to be inherited in cattle and it's pretty difficult to be diagnosed clinically with the absence of secondary sexual characters being the only clinical evidence in the presence of bilateral ovarian hyperplasia? That's true, while for testicular hyperplasia, diagnosis can be done visually and based on physical examination of the bull at 7 to 9 months of age. Well, are there any treatment for this condition? Oh, so unfortunately, there are no treatments for this condition because uh, it is a condition that is inherited. Since small ovarian dimension appear to be 
have been interpreted as hypoplasia, the therapy in Buffalo suggested uh, they may be improved nutrition or management. But there are also studies suggested that hormonal delivery, uh, such as uh, P PGF2 alpha with uh, ketosin, was successful for treatment infertility in cows suffer from unilateral ovarian hypoplasia. Unfortunately, for testicular hypoplasia, there is no treatment. So, uh, because injections of uh, uh, GnRH, FSH, and HCG are ineffective because there are no receptors are present in the response to these hormones. So, those are very few interesting conditions for cattle. So, for final disorder will be uh, called cryptokinesis. So, Kretana, would you like to explain more about this? Yes, Ian, sure. So actually, cryptokinism occurs when one or both of the testes fails to place themselves in the scrotum at the appropriate period of the species. And it is actually usually discovered at or shortly after birth. And generally, unilateral cryptokids are usually fertile, while bilateral cryptokids are generally sterile. So the retained testicle may be located anywhere from within the abdomen to within the inguinal aid canal, which is the normal passage route for the scrotum. And this is actually more common in companion animals and pigs as compared to cattle and sheep. And this retained testis actually is more typically abdominal in dogs and horses. And retention of testis within the inguinal canal is typical in horses, but not in other animals. So not only that, the clinical sign is actually quite obvious whereby they actually usually exhibit standard behavior but you can visibly or palpably lack one or both of the scrotal testicles. Oh, I see. Actually, I've also read a few cases of uh, this condition and the main cause of this is usually due to genetic, genetic anatomy or endocrine system in animals. So cryptokinetism is actually thought to be heredi hereditary in bulls and it's most likely caused by an autosomal recessive mode of inheritance, but it could also be caused by a dominant gene, uh, which is uh, incomplete penetrance. So it is thought that the endocrine reason is due to abnormal testosterone production or lack of malarian inhibitory hormone, as proper testis testicular uh, descent uh, requires both. That's a really good information, Ian. Thanks for sharing. Hey Kir, can you share info about the diagnosis step for this disorder? Yeah, sure. Do. So based on some literatures that I've read, the first step is to obtain a castration history and inspect the scrotum. So we need to examine the scrotum and the inguinal area for an incisional scar, which shows that castration has been done. And after that, palpation must be performed. So you can use digital probing of the descending testes accompanied by a spermatic cord in urinatural cryptokid animals and which can reveal whether the left or right testicle is retained. So because palpating the testicle that is inside, the inguinal canal is difficult. So you need to apply a bit pressure to the abdomen so that it can let uh, us feel the testicles and if it's inside the inguinal canal or not. So usually ultrasonic examination can also assist in this diagnosis uh, which is more easy, I believe. Oh, is there any ways to help with this order? So one of the ways that I've actually read is to perform a surgery to remove the undescended testicle. So the best choice is to best choice to control is to perform a complete castration of the crypto kit animal and maybe even like retain food as uh, some of them uh, sorry, and retain it as food animals and not for breeding purposes. Mm, I see. Uh, wow, that was a very interesting topic that we have been discussing. So I have really learned a lot of information from our discussion. So basically from four disorders, Fremantin, white hyper disease, hypoplasia, and also cryptokinesis. So I will uh, thank you all for sharing for this information. So I think uh, it is time to end our podcast soon. So I hope uh, we can have this type of discussion again in uh, the future. Okay, please stay tuned for the more interesting topic that will be discussed in future podcasts, guys. I'm Divya. I'm Kirtana. And uh, I'm Zian. Uh, so goodbye. Uh, we shall see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.